What up, what up, everyone? We're back at uh, Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. Uh, we are nearing, I believe, if it not, it may be our 60th episode at this point in time. So we've got 60 people under our belt right now and providing this new cool network of uh, entrepreneurs in our Chaldean community. We just hope that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us to be able to move forward and continue the stuff that we're doing and be able to bring on anybody from the likes of Shada that we have here today and other guests that we have had. So if you can get a chance, just go to YouTube, look up Keeping Up With The Chaldeans and just hit the subscribe button. It just takes a minute of your time to do so. And uh, we'd love to see you uh, on there. So today we have uh, Shetha Ubler. Um, she is with Third Party Billing. Um, and I'm sorry, um, am I saying that right? It's no, is it Third Party Billing? We're a Third Party Billing You're company. You're a Third Party Billing but company. We're better, but way better Way Billing. billing. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. okay, so that's, yeah. the, that's what I was saying. So it's a third party billing company. Her company name is Better Way Billing. And it is a company that helps doctors and physicians to be able to recover their money to make sure that they're going to be on point. Uh, she has the checks and balances kind of for your uh, your, your uh, doctors that, that send those payments out to you. So we're going to get into it. Before we get into this, I do want to give a shout out uh, to her mother. If uh, many of you went to West Bloomfield High School, this is the infamous Miss Farage's daughter. So if you know Miss Farage, she was a Chaldean teacher at the high school for a long period of time. So shout out to you, Miss Farage. You did well. Hey, a lot of us. Yep. It's cool <laughs> to see you now outside of school. So you know to see you here and there. So it's awesome to have you. Thank How are you? you? For How's your day me. going today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I love Good. that you do this. Good. Thank you. We're also um, we're, we're we're also glad to have you guys on here so as much as we're doing you guys are doing with us to have yeah. this show out here so let's get into today with some of the stuff that led you up to this point talk about uh, some some of the uh, jobs and things that you did prior to this uh, this was freshly started in around 2017 so mm -hmm. before all that you had other yeah. careers so let's get into that let's talk about some you know of this stuff. I am a graduate of West Bloomfield High School class of 1990 um, but there I was a little unusual for Chaldean which was that my passion was theater sure so I was a nerdy thespian at West Bloomfield did all the shows there yep. and I uh, went to Wayne State University mm -hmm. Uh, right out of school, but that wasn't such a great idea. My parents didn't really want me to do theater. That's not really what you go to school for. Everybody wanted me to be a teacher. Sure. But that didn't work for me, so I dropped out of school and kind of did my own thing for a little while. And mm -hmm. then when I was 24, I went back to Wayne State and wanted to study theater. Okay. So there I, I studied theater at Wayne State University. And in my final year of school, mm -hmm. I actually got uh, an opportunity and was hired by the second city. That's the second city out of Detroit? Yeah, so the one that was in the Fox, oh, right yeah. across from Comerica. Yeah. And that that was why I was going to school. I was going to school to be a stage manager. I was sure. offered a full-time stage management job, which was a union job with equity. Yeah. So it was just not something you passed up. Yeah, so well, I, a little I, different too, right? As a Chaldean 100%. Woman, yeah, you, yeah. Weren't, you weren't jumping into that field, you know? No, it was really exciting to do. So I, I ended up not actually officially graduating because I got this job. Okay. And so I started working for the second city. City. Uh -huh. I ran that theater for like four years and then I started touring the country okay so I with Second City so I went all over the country with all my friends had a, that had to have been cool it right? was really cool it's just for the audience they, they, yeah. they don't know what, what what is Second City so Second City is an improv uh, and comedy theater mm -hmm. where the actors were a lot of Saturday Night Live you know Tina yep. Fey and uh, Corral and Corbett, all of them come from there. Yep. Um, it's based out of uh, Chicago. Yeah. Who are some of the coolest people? You anybody? Oh my gosh, I met lots of cool people. Name maybe a couple. Uh, Jim Belushi Aww. and Dan Aykroyd, but like my friends, yep. I'm Keegan Michael Key was in my cast. Oh wow. Is a really good friend of mine, and Mary Beth and Rowe, who was the uh, plays Alice from Workaholics, is one of my best friends, and. Um, my Mark Evan Jackson, he does the commercials. He wears like a bow tie. He's hilarious. Yeah. You would recognize him if you saw him. He was in my cast. Nice. They're all doing amazing. And they're actually in LA and they have a improv troupe called 313, uh -huh. which is like all the Detroit people living yeah. in LA. So yeah. it's, it's a really cool world and they're so successful. Yeah. And it's really exciting to see them on television, movies, commercials. Of course. It's an honor to work yeah. with them. Well, I know that guy. Yeah. Or I know and, that, you know, yeah, Second because... City just celebrated their 60th anniversary wow. this year. So 60 that, years. Yeah, 60 years in the theater world. Unheard of. Yeah, so that, it's such that, a 
That's awesome definitely thing. a long time. So you started traveling. I started traveling. Mm -hmm. I was in a little diner in South Dakota in okay. January, freezing mm -hmm. my butt off. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call and the producer asked me if I would be willing to move to Las Vegas to run the theater there, which was inside the Flamingo. Wow. So I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even I didn't even hesitate. No I was like, let's asked. do it. Yes. So in two thousand and four, I picked up my whole life. Yeah. And how'd I, you break the news to the family? Because it's that's not common for us. No, but you know, I have always been a bit of a rebel as a Keldian. Okay. I think my family, like you, were just they just they didn't expect traditional from me, so everybody was excited for me. It's okay and though. They were honored that yeah. I, I was being successful. Um, and they thought it was super cool. So my whole family was very supportive. Good for them. But it was difficult. I it was say, hard. Well, good for them to be supportive. Yeah. But <clears throat> today, they may not look at us when I say to you, good for you for taking that leap, yeah. right? Because today they're leaping without no boundaries. Our, our, right. our younger generation yes. is not, they don't have to sit there and go through these hurdles. Right, they can do whatever they want. How well, did it happen? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go crazy. Yeah, what I'm saying. What I'm saying too much. How did this happen? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I when I moved home, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised at how things have changed. Changed a right? lot. Right, they really have changed. So pre-moving yeah. home, you were out in Vegas. Now, I'm in Vegas and all on your own. On, on my own, I was married yes. at the time. Okay. Um, and uh, so him and I went out there together. We mm -hmm. ended up getting divorced, but we're not going to talk about that part sure. of the story. Yep. And while I was there, I ended up, uh, the you know, theater community is very small. And so everybody kind of knows each other. Everybody hangs out. And mm -hmm. while I was there, I started befriending um, some of the cast and the other stage managers that worked for the Blue Man Group. Okay. And in 2004, mm -hmm. I was hired there. Okay. So I, I left Second City and sure. I moved to the Blue Man Group. What is the Blue Man Group? If you Blue just Man give us Blue Man Group a... is, if you've seen them, you know, they're the guys that paint themselves blue. Yep. They've been on the late show. They're amazing musicians. Yep. The show is probably one of the most incredible things I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. The musicians and the blue men are so talented to be able to express themselves with that words. Yeah. Which makes the show so great because yep. it's it's appropriate for everybody. Weren't they the guys doing a lot of the tech back in the tech music? Yeah. You see them on the commercials mm -hmm. with, with, okay. Yeah, they were really okay. into like, the three original blue Not men were like, about. Uh, into technology, they were into pushing boundaries, they were, you know, performance artists. Sure. Sure. Uh, they were so talented, crazy creative, and created a humongous theater group yeah. that has, has theater tours in all of the country, yep. um, cruise ships, they do good, everything. I'm saying good yeah, feeling good. that you're working yeah, now I with love a, it. With I loved it. group. I loved you know? it. I love Vegas, I love theater, oh, God. you're challenged. Vegas um, itself. Yeah, the best. Great. I love Vegas. My heart's there. I know. I, I, I know I love Detroit for what it is yeah. with our with our people, but <clears throat> my sister lives there and my heart's there. Yeah. It's just so much to do. I loved it. Weren't you overwhelmed? I mean, when you first got there? And no. You know, it was one of the greatest things that happened was that when you, because our culture and our families are so yeah. encompassing, yeah. that one of the best things that happened to me was being on my own without any... I. I didn't have to say yes to anything. There's sure. like very little obligation. Yes. And so you really have an opportunity to work on yourself. Yep. And I went through, you know, difficult times. I got divorced. My father died while I was here. Uh, Sorry, I couldn't yeah. have children. You know, all different kinds of things happened. And I was able to like really process. Yeah. And, uh, and work on myself, my yeah. spiritual journey, and just be the best, just be who I am today. For the viewers, so they, are, so they get... To, to your statement, and I can um, relate to that. Sometimes the overwhelming feeling of support that we have here doesn't give us the time to absorb yes. what truly happened to yeah. us. So when you went there, you were able to accept it more because you're on your own time, yeah. right? Your mind is working without the phone call coming in or yeah. the aunt or uncle to have you over, you know, to, to try without to Without the distractions. I mean, you there. don't have distractions. The only thing you really have are your own thoughts. Yes. And when you start to listen to how maybe not so great they are they're yep. negative or judgmental yep. we have a judgmental culture a little bit sure. you know just working through all of that 
and trying to just be the best person that I could be. That, that opportunity came to me there. Sure. Well, good for you because yeah. it does take that. And I think even the, the, the generation today has to understand that because they're, they're still getting a lot of what we gave. Now there's more bodies of Chaldeans that are out yes. here, right? Even though we've diversified and we're hanging out different and doing things yeah. different, it's still there. And they just don't realize how... Until usually sometimes something goes wrong, how good we do have it yeah, as Chaldeans so in our good. community. And not forgetting to use our work ethic to not yeah. only just make money, yep. but m help make yourself the best person that you can be. Sure. Right? Like yeah. it's all encompassing together. Yep. So yeah. you're working with the Blue Man Group. You're working going through the these trials and tribulations of yeah. life right now at the same time. You moved yeah. out as a Chaldean woman. You're not just an hour away on flight. You're four hours away on flight. Yeah. You're thousands of miles away. Yep. So you're starting to get your conscience is working you're clearing your head with your problems yep. right because you have forward progress and yeah you have time to work you yeah. have opportunities and then in 2008 mm -hmm. i ended up meeting um, my husband that i have sure. now yep. michael and so him and i met in 2008 and oh. we had a quick romance we got married in like eight months yeah we've now been married 11 years yeah <clears throat> by Chaldean time that's not long that's not long no long. you you're really yeah. six or under six months right. or under six you're months under. You're good so to you go. did you did yeah. good. two months you did good. Good. I eight months yes, right eight. yes yep good for me yep and uh while i was there so i i'm there everything's going good honestly he hated it there mm -hmm. he hated vegas he wanted to leave but i told him i was like look I do theater for a living. We're never leaving. Yeah. We're going to live in Las Vegas until I retire. Okay. And then in 2015, Michael's mom got diagnosed with lung cancer. Oh, sorry to hear that. She was only 63 years old. Okay. His biological mom died of an aneurysm when he was 12. And then his mother, Suzanne, when he was 14 years old, married mm -hmm. his dad and raised him. He loved her. Sure. And the, it, the cancer took her in a year. It was devastating. Sure. While that was happening, one of the drummers who worked at Blue Man, and mm -hmm. my job was the band. Those are my, my boys. Yeah. And I worked very closely with Shout them. Shout out to any of them. I love them all. I love the entire band at Blue Man. I miss you guys so much. Um, and Jason was, he was a rock star. I mean, he's a rock star. Yeah. He was gorgeous. Yep. He was talented. Yep. He was the father of two teenage boys. Yep. And he came to me in secret and told me that he was diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer and that he need, he didn't want anybody to know. Sure. And so I did his schedule. So yep. him and I, we, we went How'd to battle. How did that affect you, though? How did that affect to know you, you got somebody, a coworker you're close with, and you're holding the secret that you just... You know, my job was to help him do what he loved. And he loved to play drums, and yep. I didn't care what it took. I was going to help him play drums. You notice the... Um, the quote, black sheeps and rebels usually have some more compassion in yeah. times of these situations because we're rebels because yeah. we faced our own little demons our own inside, trials, you know, right? our trials and stuff. Yeah, yeah we want And I'm determined. Like, I am a bulldog. Like, if you, I'm going to do what needs to get done. And so right. I was determined that if he wanted to play drums, I was going to have him play drums for as long sure. as possible. Good for you. And then, unfortunately, his cancer spread. And yep. he was going to have to do chemo, and people were going to know about it. He's going to lose yep. his hair, right? Yep. And so he goes through that battle, and him and I, we're still fighting together. Mm -hmm. And in December of 2015, it got really bad. Yep. He played his last show wow. right before Christmas, and he died uh, the first week of January. That was crazy. It was horrible to watch. And when it happened, it... Between my mother-in-law dying in September of that year and yep. him dying, and and then I just was like, you, I can you had, you had really Ron also, right? My brother-in-law, yeah, who's like the fighter. My brother-in-law is Dr. Ron Katu. He's married to my amazing sister Danielle, who has you know beat uh, cancer. cancer and a brain tumor, yep. and my sister. You know, I love my sister. Yep. And when I realized that, like, I could have the coolest job in the world. Mm -hmm. I can live in the coolest city out there, right? Yeah, oh yeah. But if I'm not with my family, life goes like this. I just watch two people wither away. Yep. And what can't you get back in life? Time. Yeah. Time. Time, time is never, ever it's replaced. It's never going to come back. And those kids, my nieces and nephews, they're growing up without me. My sister doesn't have my support. Yep. I'm her only, I'm her sister. I'm her big sister. Yep. I want to be there for her. Sure. You know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And so I I actively started praying about coming home. 
Yes. Then the crazy thing happens is that in January, my uncle falls and ends up passing away. Ooh. I come home for the funeral mm -hmm. and my, my cousin approaches me if I would, she's not married yep. and she lived with her parents and I was just her and her mom. Mm -hmm. And she was like, do you think that you and Michael would move to Michigan and live here? And I was like, like literally it was crazy because yep. I'm like secretly praying about it. Yep. My heart is moving in this direction. You just need that oomph, And now she's like push. offering me this opportunity because yes. <clears throat> as somebody that works in the theater, I don't, you know, I'm not rich. Yeah. And my whole family lives in a very rich area. It's not like I can sure. afford to just pick up and come here. Completely understood. And yep. I, I, I need to have a job. And so when she gave me that opportunity, it started to open the door for me to like look for jobs. Mm -hmm. And who's your cousin? Her name is Rita, Rita okay. Farage, cool. who I love. She's like my sister. Awesome. And so I started to look for jobs. My husband was 100% on board. Mm -hmm. We're going. He hates Vegas, so yep. he's all into it. Yep. And I actively started pursuing jobs. I'm getting interviews. I'm getting flown in here for interviews. Wow. And I'm like, I'm, I'm taking my interviews like full-time jobs. I'm studying sure. the company. Yeah. I'm figuring out how to interview. Yep. I'm getting really far in the process and mm -hmm. I'm losing the jobs to people who have worked in the industry before. So like, I'm trying to go with corporate jobs, event planning, sure. you know, management yeah. jobs. That's yep. what I do. Yep. But nobody could see outside the box. Happens. Everyone's very limited. Like, no, 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 she's never worked only in theater. Not mind you that I have 20 years experience running huge shows. Yes. Uh, so I wasn't getting the jobs. And in July of 2016, I was really, really hoping to get this job at Quicken Loans. Mm -hmm. I was in the post office. They called. We're so sorry. We've decided to go in another direction. I call my sister. I'm hysterical. I'm like, yeah. Danielle, I have tried. Yeah. I've done everything that I can do. I can't get a job. I'm sorry. I sure. failed. Sure. I can't come home. She hangs with the phone. Five minutes later, she calls me back. She said, I have a great idea. What if you came here and you can be Ron's biller? Okay. I was like, okay, let's do it. She goes, okay, well, let me ask Ron. <laughs> she so, didn't even so, ask him. So to, to let them know, you're billing for Ron, which is Dr. Ron Kachuk. Right, Dr. So, Ron Kachuk. Yep, so you're helping so, billing for a doctor's office. So correct. So so my brother-in-law used to work for Henry Ford. He went out on his own in 2014. Yep. When you go out on your own, you actually become, um, as a doctor, you become your own business. You mm -hmm. have to then do all your own medical billing. Yep. It's a very complicated process. Yep. And he really was very unsatisfied. He had had two or three billers up until that point. Mm -hmm. He didn't like the process. He didn't like people he didn't know and trust sure. dealing with his money. Mm -hmm. And so he was more than willing to invest into me. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did. He took, we, we took crazy risks. We took, yep. a, I literally quit my job. Yep. My husband quit his job. My husband worked in security. He was a field training officer for the casinos. Mm -hmm. So we both quit our jobs yep. and we move across the country. Now, at this time, just so the so we can let the audience know, just to backtrack a little and give a story on, r r with all that had Ron had gone through, the time you were coming back and the time you're going through all this, your sister was going through hell herself. Hundred percent. With 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 <clears throat> Ron, um, Ron ended up having um, he was he's in a band. Yeah. Uh, uh, Detroit Doctor. Right? Yes. Or Dr. Detroit. Dr. Detroit. Dr. Detroit, Dr. Detroit right? Mom, sorry, sorry, Ron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dr. Detroit, Detroit Ron. Yeah. So, so Ron was playing at the hospital, and uh, he ended up having a uh, uh, almost like a seizure. A seizure, yeah. Okay, or it was a seizure, and they didn't know why. <coughs> um, it was on the spot at the hospital that he was performing the fundraiser for. Right. The doctors immediately took him up and realized he had a brain tumor. So he was out of commission for a minute, you know. So before all, you know, everything. And yeah, this was happening the before I came. Yes. Um, but still to like not physically be present. It's got to so eat you alive. It eats you alive. Because all you're doing yeah. is you're thinking support over the phone. You know, yeah. I'm calling Danielle, giving her, you know, optimistic conversations. But what um, some don't know is... I, I, I got to, he's my cousin. So I got to witness my cousin having to wear the head um, a protector and Being stuff like that. Unable to drive. Unable to drive. His equilibrium mm. was off for so long. They have two small children. So he had two small children to take care of. He's got a new clinic he's on the way to work, or a new um, yeah, office that he's looking to open and everything and get going to. So he had so much going on. And he, 
here he is. He's he's going through recovery. You're coming back. So it's like kind of like all three of you were going through angles of of change in your life. Danielle's got to take care of the kids, and she's stressed because she's got to now worry about the family, worry about a husband to make sure he beats his situation. Yeah. You're sitting there fighting things back from Vegas and home, going through your own trials and tribulations. And it's like all three of you came together yeah. to now come to this point here. And that conversation of, hey, we have an idea for you from somebody who went through hell and back. And to be able to continuously offer that gave you now the chance to become yeah. this new company. So, you know, if, if we'll get the logo up in a second, but if we want to explain after that phone call, what it did to you yeah. and how it all started. So after that phone call, he did everything that he said he was going to do. He invested into me. He financially invested into me so that I can learn. Mm -hmm. And I had a very unique skill set. When you're a stage manager, you are um, you're detail oriented. You can hand you know you're you you learn how to stay calm amidst mm -hmm. chaos yep. and trust. But the one thing that you learn how to do is to be a digger to be an investigator, to figure stuff out. Like sure. We always had to be the ones that knew everything. And if I didn't know anything, yep. I needed to find the answer. I wasn't just going to walk over to Good somebody and be you. like, hey, yep. you were going to figure it out. Yep. And so I used that skill set, and I learned, and I dug, and I took, I taught myself. I read, I watched YouTube videos, I, I reached out to people and found somebody um, who actually was willing to sit down with me and, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, tutor me a little bit. And um, in January 2017, I went live as Ron's medical biller. The whole point was just to be his medical biller. Just a single just, just him. I was just going to work for him. And I, as I start doing his billing, mm -hmm. I start discovering a bunch of gaps, mm -hmm. meaning uh, there's a lot of compliance that goes with medical billing. Sure. And... When a doctor, what a doctor doesn't understand is that they, they approach everything from plan of care. Like, you're mm -hmm. the patient, and we want to take care of you. Yep. But documentation and reimbursement right. is, documentation, it's a it's a legal document. It's a legal document that represents works. And what, what happens with insurance companies is that they'll pay doctors, mm -hmm. and then they do investigating and research, and mm -hmm. then they take the money back. So the doctors are making money, and then the insurance company is taking it back. And I was watching this happen. So as I'm doing his billing, they're taking the year before money back or two years. What's back. the cause for that? Like, why? Why do they? They because they, they all. Uh, it's like it was like your Indian given. It, it, it's very complicated, but it's it's like so. For example, a patient is uh, one of the areas that we found with Ron that was problematic that his other billers were not doing for him was that he had patients that were in observation status. So that means they're not technically admitted into the hospital, even sure. though they're there. Yep. So you have to bill that different. His previous billers were not. Okay. They were just billing it Universal. as if they were in the hospital. They yep. were doing inpatient billing. So then when the hospital bills outpatient, then now you have conflict information. So the insurance company is going to notice that. Okay. And then they're going to come back and they're going to say no you owe us this money you didn't so we, bill it right well we when, when i it, it's not <coughs> not to bring the comparison but when i was in the wireless industry we'd get paid commission on selling the phone if there was some discrepancy we would get a chargeback yeah. so you guys would pretty yeah. much get chargebacks We're getting charge back. the doc it's happening to doctors all the time it's actually they don't even know that it's happening right. you are probably losing way more money than you think you are take backs are happening and you don't know that they're happening sure they take them from your current checks you probably have no idea yeah so i started finding these so yep. i'm like remember and i'm just focused on him mm -hmm. i have a very rare opportunity most billers are way overworked multiple clients right yeah multiple clients yeah. they don't even have time sure. to really pick things apart so here i am and i'm like i'm and i'm educating him and i'm telling him like these no, you, we have to do this. You need to do that. He you're, was like, you're, you're what? A you're a biller slash controller right now. Right. And I'm seeing, like, I, he's my brother-in-law. I mm -hmm. want to protect it. What's the point of making money if it's not being protected? Right. True. Making money that's just then leaving? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, this is crazy. So I start really working with him. Of course, he's receptive. He, he wants to make money. He wants his money protected. Of he's working hard. He's working seven days a week, yep. saving very, very sick people. Mm -hmm. And so as I research, I talk to him. So him and I are talking. We're working together. I'm making him money. 
and he gives me an opportunity to uh, so so we're doing all of that it's very it's a lot of work okay so my husband who's working at Motor City Michael yeah casino my husband yep. Michael's yep. working at Motor City Casino mm -hmm. the snatched him up he's all the casino industry yep. right experience so on his days off he starts helping me okay. because it's so overwhelming amount of work yep. and I noticed something really interesting which is that my husband he has like spidey sense. He has like observation skills that are like unbelievable. Yeah. Because he does surveillance, he can read lips, he worked undercover. So his ability to take all this information and input it correctly yep. blew my mind. He never made a mistake. So I and I'm kind of like all he, over he the place. His T and dots his yeah, eyes. and I'm very passionate and like all over the place. And here he is, like he's like I'm like but I'm like, honey, you're amazing. Yeah. You need to quit your job. If you quit your job and you and I work together, we can make even more money because there's so much money to be made. It's sure. just sitting under. Like sure. it's rejections, it's denials, yep. it's it takes investigating and digging, we right? We had to do it in our industry. Right, you do it in your industry. You have, you have to. to work hard. And you have and we had to hire somebody to do what you're doing. Exactly. Because when we're losing sometimes three, four, five thousand dollars, I mean it doesn't sound like an astronomical number. But it adds but, up. But it adds up because by the end of the year you've lost forty, fifty thousand dollars in, 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 in profits. And also to me it's infuriating. For, to know that Ron is going to the hospital working harder than anyone and that I ever know and then not getting paid? Yeah, someone's taking uh -uh. money. Like, I'm, that's not okay with us. So my husband quits his job. Mm -hmm. Him and I start working together. Mm -hmm. And in August of 2017, mm -hmm. we have this opportunity to go to a leadership conference, which takes the Christian community and the corporate community and blends them together. Okay. It's really fascinating. Sure. Where was this at? It was um, it was based out of Woodside Church in Chicago, but then they they like um, I mess up the word where you can like go to different places and they uh, you can see it on the screen. Okay, okay. you know yeah, what I'm talking about. about live? Yes. Yeah, okay. so like yep. it's happening in Chicago, but yep. you can anybody's satellite watching from live yeah able satellite to, yep, live yep, right. Yep. So we were at a church in Warren, and it's being satellite in, and yep. there's like the the creator of the culture of Google was there. Wow, okay. The CEO of Facebook was talking. This woman who survived the Rwandan Holocaust was there, and it was two days of some of the most inspiring messages I've heard in a long time. Mm -hmm. And while I was sitting there, I started to get really excited about the possibility and the opportunity that Michael and had to create an amazing place for people to work. Okay. So Michael and I remember we're both managers. We're like yep. these middle managers for most of our careers. Sure. We could influence people but we never had power. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can never ultimately make decisions. Sure. And I was like, okay. We can be in charge. We I can, can I can be the now. boss lady, right? Yeah. I can create an environment where people want to work. Yep. And that for me was very exciting. Yep. So then I start really thinking about that. And in January 2018, based on all that we've done for Ron, we end up getting a new client who's also just as busy as Ron. Mm -hmm. So we bring my sister in law in and now it's the three of us. And we're working out of their house. Yep. We're, 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 it's the three of us, we're working hard, we're doing it, and uh, Ron has a great idea to bring me in to speak to the residents at Garden City Hospital because they don't know anything about documentation. Like sure. They're going to medical school, but they're not learning how to protect their money. Yep. So I go in in June, and I, I uh, give a class to the residents on documentation and mm -hmm. the requirements, and out of that, I get another client. So one of the residents runs to his attending, mm -hmm. tells him, oh my gosh, we've got to talk to this girl because he had been complaining about his biller. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, like 48 hours later, I have another client. Great. So now I have another client. Yep. And then we get another phone call from somebody that knows somebody, and we got another client. Sorry, so, are you calling Ron at this time? Say, <laughs> Ron, just, I'm excited. Dude. Just, I'm like, guess what? I got to get out of your house. Yeah. I can't work here anymore. <laughs> you know? Like, listen, I'm outgrowing yeah, this whole I, 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 We're yeah. overwhelmed in paper. 
So he had to have been excited too, right? He was right? so excited Cause, cause and you, so supportive. Yeah. Anyone like he, he's my reference. Anyone calls, he speaks so highly of us. He wants me to be successful. People know him. He's very blunt, but he's very laid back. Too. He's very laid back. Yes. When it, yeah. He's all about family. If it's the kids yeah. and stuff, he's all about that. But he's blunt and he's laid back. I love How it. How the two works, I don't I know. know. I love everything about <laughs> you know him. Know we get along good. Good. He trusts me, and you know, he said one of the things he said that meant a lot to me is like, you know. What I love about you is that you're honest. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, scratch that. You're extremely honest. Mm -hmm. And you fight for my money as if it was your own. And that was like, yeah. You well, know he, what I mean? It felt he, good. Like, he, that is he, what we do. He, they learn their medical side of it. They don't learn the economic side of it. 100%. Right? He's, he, he also has fought for people, too. Yes. He was there for me with my accident. He, Anthony is not on today, unfortunately. He had um, s something, family to attend to right now. So it's you and I here today. But I wish Anthony was on here today to let you know what Ron has done for him and his yeah. family. You know, so so he inspires, he brings it out. He toughens you up. He's got a little tough love in him. He does. Yeah. But you know what? You, you, you want to hear that coming from that doctor. You don't want to, you know, from him. He's already seen the worst of the worst, 100%. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, from the trauma he's seen, I'm sure he's gone through his own, but... To get that motivation, he gives it. Yes. When he finds it in you, he gives it. 100%. When he sees you waste it, he doesn't even say shit to you. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. He's, he's, out. Out. he's, he's out. out. He's out. He doesn't even yeah. care. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> it's not there because he feels like if you don't have it in you and he sees it from the outside to improve yourself, yeah. and that's big. And, I, and the reason I'm giving a little bit more on him in conversation is because you're here today because of this um, gentleman, yes. right? And if this gentleman had passed and gone and, and left our world in 2014, we wouldn't even be here talking today. Ugh, I can't right? even think about that. No, so, and so, that's what, so, yeah, it's all the pieces together. It's so, the goodness so of God. Yeah. He's pushing you, telling you, okay, get out yeah. of my house. So Let's we, get to the next so level. So we, we open up our own office. Awesome. And we get a logo, yep, which yep. I love. We'll, 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 we get we'll, my logo back up there. Yep. <laughs> well, no, um, we'll, we'll, we, we'll, we'll get it. It's, we move into our own yep, office yep. in yep. July of mm -hmm. 2018. Yep. We end up hiring a couple more people. So, like, currently today, yep. we have... There it is. There it is. We're there proud it is. of it. BWB. BWB. So today we have uh, three full-time employees, mm -hmm. three part-time employees, mm -hmm. including Michael and myself. Yep. We have um, eight physician groups as mm -hmm. a whole mm -hmm. that we uh, bill for. Sure. Um, we're making all of them more money than they've ever made Let's before. talk about that before yeah. we go further ab about about how well you're doing for each other. <coughs> eight doesn't sound a lot. One didn't sound at all. Right? Yeah. Then you got to two or three, and you're getting excited. The viewers are probably going, shit, she's only got seven, eight clients. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? What do you do? But the time that I, that when we talked pre the interview, the time that you're investing into each client is not just a whoop de doo. We got the one, we took care of it, have a good day. If it was that easy, they wouldn't need you. 100%. Look at Michael and I worked for Ron full time. Yep. Two of us. How many hours? One what would you say? We both worked 40 hours at least. Okay. That's two people handling two people, one client. One client to make the maximum amount of revenue for mm -hmm. him, right? Mm -hmm. So you can I could be on the phone. I can have one of my billers on the phone yep. for over an hour. Sure. For one or two clients. Not crazy. And what ends up happening is these third party billing companies, we operate off of a percentage. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? So I make a percentage of whatever money that I bring in. Yep. So what ends up what I've noticed, and I can't speak for everyone, but what I've seen mm -hmm. is that a lot of times trying to collect on say a hundred and sixty dollars. Sure. Right? Sure. What's that going to bring me? 16 bucks? But you have an accrued volume of it. Right? So what ends up happening is a lot of the billing, they don't do it. Yes. They just let it go. Yeah, because it's to them in their head 16. Yeah. But take multiple 16s. Yeah. It's like anything else. Yeah. You take so it for us, it's our integrity. It's like we do the right thing. It's like we're going to do it better. We're going to do it better. We are not going to so that's dismiss a, a claim. Way, yep, we're going to do it better. It's a better way of doing it's it. It's a good better way, way of doing good, it. We good, are I like not the company now, name, understanding. going to dismiss a yes. dollar amount claim. We're going to do our to. best. We're going to work it. Yeah. So, like, with eight, I have, there's, like, literally nine of us working. Mm -hmm. That's, like, over one-to-one -one ratio. Yeah. And that's what we do. It's how hard we're willing to work to make the doctors the money they deserve because it's the right thing to do. Of course. 
It's it, it shouldn't be. You, all the work that they put in, you know, I understand there's fraud that happens. You know, I get it. There, you know, there, there's there's doctors who do things they shouldn't be doing. Listen, just because the title of doctor is there, teacher is there, priest is there, principal, whatever it is, it doesn't mean you can't bend or go wrong. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, so in your eyes, you're seeing somebody who is doing everything legitimately, who is hardworking, he's 100%. providing something. All of our clients, yeah. all of our clients, they yep. work so hard. That, They're passionate about their patients. They want to do the right yeah. thing. They're receptive. They want to learn. You know, we don't want to work with clients that don't want to do that. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, you know what? Sometimes people don't want to do the right thing. Sure. No, I they understand. They would rather skim a corner. We're not the right company for you. And that sucks. Like we, we're gonna, we're gonna hold you accountable. Is what that's what I want to ask you. Yeah. Do you catch that on early to know that those are not clients you would want, or do you sometimes have you experienced it where you started with them? And saw a little bit of something you didn't like and said, you know, we're going to have to pass on this. Um, yeah. You know, we we're, have we're, had to do that once. Yeah, we don't need names, but I'm saying, yeah. have you experienced that? We have. We okay. have. We've experienced it because it's, you know, it's hard to change. Sure. It's hard for people to change. Well, if, you got integrity, something, if you got yeah. integrity, you got integrity. You're not going to have me come give you the poison apple yeah. and say, here, eat it. Let me poison we you. We have had to do it once. Um, most, what we have found mm-hmm. is that most of our uh, doctors, they really want to do the right thing. They sure. want to learn. Sure. They want to protect their money. Mm-hmm. They don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> they, they don't want to go to jail. No. They don't want like, to get sued. No. We take that seriously. That's our job. Especially today. Right? If you 100%. look at a lot of the, the, so the scary. front cover. There's a doctor just today I read today. He's going through double term life because he was doing fake surgeries on people's spines and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like... And the billing companies don't have their backs. Like, we have our doctor's backs. Like, if we're getting audited, we don't worry. Yeah. We have nothing to worry about. We're like, okay, let's do it. This is an awesome opportunity for us to show our clients and the insurance companies that we're doing the right thing. We're excited about it. Well, good for you. Because there is a bad stigma that follows behind doctors and malpractices and all the... No, I'm Mm -hmm. sorry, not malpractices. Ms. Billing and and all the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes... You get your bill, you're like, shit, that was $3,000? I went in for, you know, get my throat checked and this and that. <laughs> you, well, you know what I'm saying? You start thinking and you say to yourself, like, you have no one to call and contest. Was it really this value or was it should have been this? You know, and so the insurance are paying out and these doctors take. And, and you're right. It's the ones that truly are sincere and doing this for the right reasons would want to use you. And you know what, Junior? We... I literally get thank you cards from patients yeah. because I will talk to them on the phone. I will explain their bill to them. Good. I will help them even explain their, you know, whatever I can do to sure. help them. Sure. Because we understand I'm, I'm a person who I get medical bills that I don't, I can't afford to pay or I can't deal with them. My husband has some stuff going on right now and we have to deal with insurance companies on a personal level. Yeah. So we talk to our patients. Everyone always tells me, Shava, you can't be on the phone with the patients for so long. And I was like, but why? I want to, I care about them. Shava, you're putting your feet in their shoes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when we flip roles, it's kind of like how we do retail, right? We always see the other guy on the other counter and going, man, if I walked in some place and they did that shit to me. So it's like same with you. It's like I'm, I'm in their shoes. When they're yeah. calling, I used to be that person checking on this. Or maybe you weren't. But at the end of the day, we realize like you're, you're yeah. going through something that like maybe my aunt or uncle are going to go through or my sister mm-hmm. or brother will go through. So might as well treat you like I would treat And they'll them. yell at me. Like, as soon as they'll come in, like, I still start yelling. And, I, and I, by the time we're done, yep. we're laughing. Yep. They understand what's going on. We're working payment plans for them. We're making sure yep. that they understand what's going on. All of it. Good. I got to give you, I mean, I got to give you credit because good for you. You can't just that. The calls are coming in. Somebody's already pissed off majority yeah. of the time. They're not calling happily going to, no. hey, I got a $5,000 bill. Yeah. I'd like to pay it, but can you explain to me? It's like, wait, no. They're telling you why they don't feel they need to pay. Yeah. They you know don't know what what's saying? going on in the hospital. A lot of times they're sick. Yeah. They don't remember things. They're just like, I don't even know who this is or what happened. or sure. I don't remember this. Well, sometimes bills come from multiple angles, too. Yes. When I go in sometimes for MRIs or certain things with the doctor, when I go for my physical, sometimes there's two, three bills that come. One from his office, one from the blood work, one from, you know, the cats, you know, so, yeah. so, so you know, the EKGs or whatever they do. So there's multiple levels of things that come from testing. And the, eight, and the, um, the business is changing. So, like, you should know, like, when you go to a hospital and a doctor comes and sees you, yeah. most of the time they don't work for the hospital. 
They work for themselves. Yes, they're you're part gonna of get a, group. a bill from the hospital, yep. and then you're gonna get a bill from the doctors. Yep. And most people don't know that. So then when they come home, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden their mailbox is bombarded yeah. Three, with four bills, different your bills. Like, what the hell? They're like, what's going on? And yeah. they, they don't understand it. Sure. It's difficult. And you you pay one, that. another one pops yeah. up a week later. You're like, what the hell? There's forty five dollars here. They're, they're exasperated. They're sure. they're frustrated. And we, we, even though I don't technically work for the doctor, we mm -hmm. provide a service. Yeah. We consider it our responsibility to represent the doctor sure. to the patients. Sure. So a <clears throat> um, couple things. We've had some uh, physis physicians, physicians on here, doctors, and we've had some therapists, uh, physical therapy uh, owners too. Um, are those guys that can use you? Like we had Bruce Kello. He's a, he, he works with the foot doctor okay anything from neon down so he has got a group <laughs> of five people those are the guys that can come reach out to 100 percent. we do podiatry physical therapy yep. inpatient nursing home critical yep. care internists the thing about us is that we're willing to learn like sure. if i don't currently bill your specialty mm -hmm. i will figure out how to build your specialty. And you might be saying like, well, I don't want somebody that doesn't know how to build my specialty, but everything is constantly changing in this industry. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have a company that's staying up to date yep. on the changes or what's going on, you might not actually be getting reimbursed properly. So I will make sure that I know every little detail. And dollar come in and go and on. And every little detail. And also like, if you're a doctor, I'm just begging you, are you keeping your billing company accountable? Do you know where your money is going? If you love your billing company, great. But are they giving you reports? Are you holding them accountable? Is the money that they're saying they're bringing you matching the money that's coming into your bank account? Like yeah. You have to be invested in this stuff because it's very easy for the billing company to get overwhelmed, yeah. for things not to be... Uh, sure, you get you know, lost as a client. You get lost as, as a, a client. client. Yeah. You have to be your own advocate. Yep. And are you creating a relationship with them? Like, I go to the I go to the offices. I pick up mm -hmm. the billing myself. Mm -hmm. I pick up the explanation of benefits myself. I build relationships with the staff. Sure. Because the office managers and the staff, I need them to know what they're say, doing. Yep. If they don't know what they're doing, they're making my job very Hard. difficult. Yep. So we're educating their staff. Mm -hmm. We're available. The staff calls us we don't know what's this insurance company what should we do we answer our phone yep. i've heard you know from providers tell me like i call my billing company and nobody answers or the patients say i call and nobody's answering sure. we're answering sure so shada in in light to what you're saying um say somebody like the bahura brothers that own a, a pt center or Bruce, or a few mm -hmm. of the guys that we've had on here. They they have their own billing that they're doing right now, but do you offer something where to say, hey guys, give me a shout, let me take a look at it and see if you guys are really getting billed right and what sure. I could do for you. So can they reach out to 100%. you? 100%. And do you go visit them or they send you stuff over for you to well, take you know, a look at? Well, you know, we can do whatever we need to do. Okay. You know, how complicated yeah. is it? Like, yeah. is it just like, hey, I, one of the things that we've done a lot yep. is um, whenever we get our new clients, they oh, they're always their concern is my bank account doesn't match what the biller tells me. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we'll do audits for them where okay. we'll we'll get copies of their statements, we'll get copies of the reports, yep. we'll match the statements for them, and then we come back and we explain it to them. Because a lot of times if a billing company is behind, mm -hmm. yep. meaning like your money is coming in in October, December, but your billing company is not posting until February. Wow. So how is your stuff going to ever match up? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So we yeah. try not to do that ourselves. Okay. Um, we we post and bill real time because okay. we want the. But even still, like you might get something come in at the end of the month. Sure. That doesn't get posted to the next month. I mean, nothing's perfect, right. but yes. You we try can. to bring it as close as possible yeah. so that they get paid. Or I even mean, if it's just like a conversation, like this is our community, right? Yep. I care about the community. If you're a doctor and you just are like, I kind of, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's right. Yeah. Just call me. We'll sit yeah. down. We'll talk about it. Yeah. You can ask me any questions that you have. And I can, maybe it's as simple as just giving you the confidence that what you have right now is working for we you. We do have quite a bit of doctors in our in our industry. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, in our community, our community. That, are, that are in the industry. Um, we do have them. I mean, there, there's even the, the younger ones that are coming up coming now. Up. I mean, you know. Oh, speaking of that, yep. if you are a resident, 
if you are a young doctor, I beg you to call me so that you can get the proper education so that you understand how to document correctly to protect your money. Because if you don't know how to code properly, if you don't understand credentialing and contracting, this is an area that we find to be a huge problem. Yeah. Doctors believe that things are contracted and credentialed properly and they're not. They're right. losing so much money because sure. they have no idea. As a young resident, you have got to take this seriously. Call me so I can give you resources, guide you, point you in the right direction. Sure. Um, Because you need to take it very seriously. Are are you also able to um, service outside of Michigan too? So yeah, you know what we haven't, but we can. You can. Yes, we can. Other states can come reach out to you, so that's good. So is um is there anything that we didn't touch up on? I know we've talked about from where you were from Vegas to this point here. Yeah. You're now at you know you started with five clients. You're now at nine clients, um, eight or nine clients. We have now. eight clients now. Okay, mm-hmm. eight clients now. Oops, to, yeah. Again, to some that may not seem a lot, but your workload is right. plenty heavy. Are it's you hiring funny. right now? You know what? We are always looking for experienced billers. Okay, it was sure. one of the. One of the lessons that I've learned Mm -hmm. is that this industry is so complicated and not everyone can um, learn quickly. Or keep up. Right, or keep up. So having an experienced builder or somebody that has a background Mm -hmm. is what we're always looking for so that we can then, so that they have a foundation and then we can build on the foundation. So yes, of course, always looking for experienced applicants. Good. Um, Where's the future of your company, where do you see it? Um, yeah. Do you have expansion coming? I mean, are, are you? You know, and I t- understand that, I really mean this when I say that, yeah. like I believe with all my heart yep. that my husband and I, ultimately, we are philanthropists. We care about helping people. We Good. want to give back to the community. Good for you. And we want to create an amazing place for people to work. Sure. And we want to help doctors make the money that they deserve. Those are our goals. And so we're shooting for the stars. We're, I feel like God told me, like, you're going to be a million-dollar company and you're going to use that money for, the, for God's kingdom to work. help people, you know? Well, you keep and having so that faith, right? You have faith that yeah. brought you here. Have faith that you have continued yeah. success, right? We're going to keep working hard and doing what we do. Good. We're going to take the opportunities as they come. Um, but we're not, we're not going to put it in a box. We're, we're ready to go. Good. Good yeah, for you. Good for you. Well, Miss Faraj did a great job. Great She's movie. a great mom. Yep. She's the best mom. Yep. She really she taught is. us to fight. Anything that we didn't cover that that we have may have missed that we want to let the viewers um, know? I don't think so. Just thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, um, you rock. Just it's, take it seriously. Yeah. It's your income, you know? Yeah. Don't, yes. don't, don't not know what's happening with your income. And best way doctors to reach out to you would be So what? um they can call our office. Okay. It's our I don't know do we have you, our, you you can fire off phone numbers. Yeah, we're gonna have phone them all in the links too is for you. 248-499-8905. You can email me Shaga S H A T H A at betterwaybilling.com. Cool. Our website is www.betterwaybilling.com. Yep. We're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook. Good. Um, we're in Sylvan Lake. Come That's and visit saying, us. I was, two, I was three, just gonna say, yeah. local enough to we're be right there. We're two three six zero Orchard Lake Road, right at, right across from CVS, cool. right next to Comerica. Come visit me. Cool, <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, before we conclude the show, we always ask a question to our um, to our interviewees so the audience know what does it mean to you to be Chaldean. It means having a fighting spirit, a work ethic, and a family that no matter what is always there. My mom always told me, it doesn't matter who, you can have the best friends in the world, no one is going to be there like your family. My cousins, they're my heart, my brothers, my sisters, my mom, I'm just, it's all about family for me. Fighting, work ethic, and family. Beautiful. Couldn't said any better. Well, I know uh, this may not air by the uh, time that uh, we get it out, but we want to wish you a Merry Christmas to you and to all the viewers. Thank you, everybody. Happy holidays. Yep, and to a Happy New Year. We want to see something awesome, even more from what you're doing for 2020 with you guys. And hope you uh, have hundreds of doctors that are going to be running through you. Thank you for this opportunity to get the word out, what we're trying to do. Doctors, 
You got it right here. You got an honest <laughs> biller and somebody who's here to protect your money. So yes, 100%. make sure you check out Shetha. References uh, available. All of our doctors are willing to to speak on our behalf. So cool. that's available as well. Awesome. Well, we thank you. Thank you, viewers. We'll see you guys after uh, the holiday. Peace out. Bye. Thank you.